Welcome to Alone With You. This is a sci-fi romance adventure, as it says on the screen. It's made by Benjamin Rivers, who you might know as the person who last released Home, which is a little horror adventure game that came out in 2012. I did a playthrough of that many years ago, actually. Um, I think that was really early on in the life of my channel, so it's probably a pretty terrible playthrough, but I remember it being a, a decent little horror adventure game. So let's see what Benjamin Rivers has done since. So there we go, that's the end of the intro, you pretty much control the character instantly, it seems like. And I've just played the first, like, two minutes of the game, but already I'm surprised that, unlike most adventure games, you can't examine every tiny little thing and get a description from it, it seems. Maybe that's just the introduction, I don't know. But I'm so used to being able to just go up to everything and just, what's that? Tell me about that. Tell me about the stones on the cliff. Right, anyway. This place looks like it's falling apart. Also, you see that little toolbox in the bottom right of the screen? I really feel like I need to pick up all those tools to solve some sort of a puzzle. I'm probably just being paranoid. Adventure games. Holosome chamber inaccessible. Main hallway. Crew quarters inaccessible. Ship hangar also inaccessible. I'm glad you made it back. I assume you were at your usual lookout over the rift again. You must have seen the worsening situation out there. Did you notice the planet's instability on your way here? Um... Well, certainly it seemed like it was storming like crazy. I wouldn't say it seemed unstable, just... hectic. I noticed? Then you can appreciate what a pickle we're both in. I wish I had better news but I feel I owe it to you, to be honest. The situation is, unfortunately, quite dire. The Hudson Carter Terraforming Project 27A has unequivocally failed. As you remember, we started with dozens of staff, over 2,000 robots and drones, and a very specific plan. This facility was the best in the sector. Now, as far as the Home Office is concerned, the entire facility is a write-off. Sixteen years of work has been undone. I apologize for being so direct, but... Would it shock you to know that, by my estimates, we have less than a month to survive? Well, given the state of everything, makes sense. Perhaps your astuteness is why you alone have survived. The next three weeks are critical. As Epsilon... Iridani B continues to decline. We still have an escape ship here, in Colony A. 
It is structurally sound, and I believe I can help you fly it so we can escape. If we can transmit an emergency signal to the home office, we can likely intercept a company vessel in our ship and gain transport back home. The problem is, there are four key systems on the escape pod that I can't repair, and you aren't trained to deal with it by yourself. However, as you may recall, this colony includes a holosim chamber to help the population deal with the often lonely, monotonous reality of life out here. Oh, are they gonna train me in the holosim to learn how to repair everything properly? Thankfully, that chamber is still operational, if a little glitchy. And this is where my plan comes in. Four other colonists were experts in the appropriate fields. I don't believe you ever met them. Winnie Laurier was our communications expert, and she could have helped us repair the navigation systems. Pierre Tong was the colony director and an engineering genius. He would have been able to assist us with the thrusters. Leslie something I can't pronounce ran the agro domes, and I'm sure she could have helped us maximize the ship's life support and food processing. And Jean... Lumumba led the resource management teams. He could have shown us how to best keep the ship powered and stable. I can help direct you to the materials we need to fix the ship, but some of the details were only known to these four crew members. Sadly, some of my systems have become corrupted as the colony has failed. I'm less useful to you now. But if we can use the Holosim to recreate these four key colleagues, we might stand a chance of getting off this planet. Their expertise may be the only thing that allows us to escape. It's a long shot, but if we work together, I think we can make it. So that's the plan. Before you go to your quarters, though, let's register your name, so the, hologram know, the holograms know what to call you. Let's go with Nella. Okay, you've entered your name as Nella, is that correct? Yes. Excellent. I'm glad we got that straightened out. Alright, crew quarters. I'm really... I'm really curious exactly how we're supposed to recreate these, uh, my colleagues. I mean, is there some sort of an imprint of them stored inside of the... the computer? I mean, it has to be, right? But if it's stored inside of the computer, why can't the AI just access it outright and get that knowledge? I don't understand. I guess it probably wouldn't be that simple, would it? It's easy to assume just because this seems so far in the future that the AI I'm talking to must be some, like, super AI that can do anything in the world, but there's no real reason to assume that. Just because the data exists doesn't mean it can process it into, into anything useful. Man, I just want to examine every little thing. Tell me about this computer. Actually, yes, tell me about this computer. Is this set in the future? Certainly future technology, but this computer looks ancient. Looks like it takes floppies. I've got a little dead... looks like a dead plant in the corner here. Probably can't spare the water to water it. Rest for a while. just woken up, but as we discussed, time is of the essence. How are you functioning today? Are you well? <coughs> hmm. I guess. That's good. 
Your task will be easier if you're well rested. Please come see me again in the core at your earliest convenience. Also, wait a minute, is this- Oh my god, yes, yes, yes. It was just the- That is so smart! It's just the very introduction of the game where they cut off your ability to- to, um, examine all the objects around you. That totally makes sense, actually. They're trying to- They're trying to direct you to the right flow for the introduction. That's something I've always found really kind of jarring about some adventure games. You know, when there's like a, maybe a tense moment or something like that, where they're like, you need to go rescue this person, time's of the essence. But since it's an adventure game, you can spend like 40 minutes just reading descriptions of every little bookcase and shelf around you. It always struck me as just kind of ridiculous. So I guess to keep the flow of the introduction going, they just disabled your ability to do that until just now. That's really cool. And it also makes me really happy, because I really want to read about all these things. What have I been reading? Full of titles on a variety of topics, including sociology, terraforming, and engineering. You'll never understand why people prefer physical books to their digital counterparts. Oh, I'll never understand. Wait. I'll never understand... Okay, so I'm a robot, right? I mean, the kind of strange glowing eyes, I guess, sort of gives it away. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm a robot. Because they're talking about these paper books as if they're something very strange compared to digital books, and even though they're my books, and my bookshelf... This comment, I'll never understand why people prefer physical books to their digital counterparts, sounds very much like that's those are people books and not books fit for me. It's not the most comfortable bed, but it's all we have at the moment. At least with nobody around, you don't need to worry about its appearance. On the other hand, the fact that my character seems to need to sleep suggests that they're not a robot? the same kind of standard terminal as you'll find around the colony. We can't spare the power cycles for its use at this time, I'm afraid. Oh! No, I'm not hearing... I'm not hearing comments from my character, I'm hearing comments from the AI? Yes. Interesting. That's strange. It's very interesting that they decided to go with hearing the voice of the AI and not the voice of you. At least I think that's what that is. Ah, oh, I can't examine the computer. You've left an empty photo frame, a rack, and some non-functioning equipment there. I can't look at the poor little plant, either. Oh, I can actually go to the mess hall now. I guess this is just a light, but it looks like some sort of, like, teleporter chamber. Just head north to the core and we can discuss your mission for the day. Hmm, I should probably go to the mess hall and eat before I start doing stuff, I'd imagine. Shipping inaccessible. Okay, yeah, let's go to the mess hall. It wasn't too long ago that all of the residents of Colony A shared their meals here, in the common room. Since the food processors are running low, you'll have to make do with what's left here until... What's left here until... Wait, you'll have to make do with what's left here until for now. That sentence does not make any sense to me. <laughs> You'll have to reserve water and other materials for the trip home, so I'm afraid it will be difficult to keep this place clean. Hmm, true. That's too bad. Yes, I'm afraid there isn't much we can do about it. What potable water we have will need to be rationed. In any case, we might as well use this room for something now. 
I've arranged for a readout of the hologram's daily work reports here. This will keep you updated on the state of the escape ship, and who knows, perhaps the holograms will have something to say from time to time. <coughs> Christ, I would not want to eat anything from here. What a shithole. I've got a long way to go before the ship is ready for departure. The communications array, thrusters, life support systems, and fuel supply all need work. Great, because I've done nothing. Uh, I guess I don't actually need to eat, or at least I can't eat. <laughs> Look at the swagger in the character's walk. Look at that. Something about the shoulders just looks kind of funny. Like, this person's just up bright and early at 6 in the morning. Ready to try to fix the escape ship. Just excited. Just a beautiful new day. Alright, what are we doing for today? Okay, Nella. Last night I scanned what's left of the colonies in hopes of finding material we can salvage. I think I found a few good leads. I think it would be best if we first go to the comms relay and find five communication devices we can use for the escape ship. The comms relay is where Winnie Laurier was last known to be. Hopefully you can find out some more information on her on your trip as well. When you're ready, you can go south to the shuttle bay and plot a course there. Still don't understand how this whole reconstructing these experts is going to go. Hollow sim so inaccessible. Okay. Anything to examine? Nope. Oh, cool. You can actually select where you want to go. Inaccessible. Yep, yep, yep. Comms relay station. Okay. So there's five different locations other than the main base. So I'm guessing four for the four members I need to um, get to know and learn from, and then one extra for something. Probably been a long time since you've been to the comms relay. I don't believe you had occasion to come here often, if at all. When the other colonists separated, this was considered a prime location, but only one person really had the expertise to make good use of it. Remember, you're looking for components we can use to power the escape ship's communications. Five good parts should do it. Oh boy. Even from here, I can sense how damp and musty it is in there. It probably smells to you like an old puddle. The increasing acidity of this planet's rainfall has apparently weakened and damaged the structure there. That's partly why I don't quite understand why you keep going to that lookout near the rift. It's harmful for your suit. Looks like the elevators are partly affected. They'll probably only move one floor at a time, as a safety precaution. This looks like a standard issue field notebook. Most of the colonists use these as well as data pads. The notebooks were inexpensive and easy to transport, and studies revealed that humans enjoyed physically writing on paper. That seems rather inefficient, but I suppose tactility is important in forming emotionally impactful memories. Speaking of which, this looks like, well, it looks like the beginnings of some sort of fiction. That's interesting. It reads, the last interview with Paula M. Paula had suffered a long and arduous struggle against the dark, and now, in her final moments with it, she relented to its questions. These are the only pages included with this notebook. If we want to read the rest, we'll have to find the other pages.
Server room's locked. Elevator goes up from here. Do you want to go up? Yes. Terminal room two. More pages? Yeah, series of torn pages, likely from the notebook on the first floor. Looks like the story starts here. Okay, yeah, because the page we found before did not seem like the beginning. The dark. Why struggle? You know I've been here. I've been waiting all this time. Why didn't you give up? Paula. It's not in my nature just to give up. The dark. Really? I'm not so sure about that. For a long time, even amongst your peers, you gave up. Or at least you seemed to withdraw from them. Isn't that like giving up? Paula. I don't think so. The Dark. That's interesting. Because they did. The further you isolated yourself, the less they felt like reaching out. Didn't you notice that? Paula. Yes, I noticed it. I assume there's more. Maybe you'll find more pages as we press on. It's interesting though, isn't it? Yeah. I thought so. Hopefully we'll get to read the rest of the story. We should continue. Portable safety light. They use sophisticated LEDs and can last for over a year each. Its location suggests it was kept on, perhaps as a beacon or because someone kept going there. If that was the case, whoever was in the comms relay was using that room frequently. like the terminal isn't functioning properly, perhaps the environmental conditions affected it. Can't access it for now, okay. Let's keep going up. How are you doing so far? Need any help? No, I'm good. You are very resourceful, Nella. If you need a reminder about what you're doing while you're in one of the facilities, just press the H key and I'll help. Gotcha. It's another elevator. Locker room locked. <laughs> that's ironic. Tower bridge exit. Okay, that's open. So this one can't go up anymore? It goes down from here. Okay, yeah. Nope. Go to the tower bridge exit. It's an open relay conduit. It looks like someone had to repair this terminal more than once in an attempt to continue transmissions. There's some clever work here. Your scan will help me configure the ship's communication parts to be more redundant and failsafe. Now we only need four more communication parts from this area. Good. Small pile of physical books. All colonists were issued data pads with e-reading abilities, but I suppose that wasn't to everyone's liking. There are assorted philosophy titles from old human writers. You can see very neat notes written in the margins. The first page has a monogram on it. W. Is that a hint to something? Well, don't need to worry about it for now. Let's keep going up. Storage room locked. Conduit room open. For the set of pages from the field notebook on the first floor, the story continues. The dark. So what made you change your mind? You're here, talking to me now. You wouldn't have entertained that before. What changed? Paula. 
Well, this is the end, isn't it? There's no one else out there. So I'm talking to you. The Dark. You know that's not true. There are still others out there. You can hear them on your radio. Paula. But they don't know that. They don't know I made a new radio. The Dark. No, of course not. That w that's what makes you so interesting. You withdraw, but in your way, you still reach out. You just don't want anyone to discover that. Paula falls silent for a moment. This story sounds like it's getting serious. I'm curious. Who are you siding with right now? Paula? Or the Dark? Uh, right now, neither. Maybe you're right. We should see how the story plays out first. For now, let's move on. There's certainly fewer components in that tower than you might think. I don't believe the drones finished fitting it as well as the others. As the construction of the colony's prefab elements continued, resource allocation estimates often became skewed. Too bad, really. It's a remote service panel for running diagnostics and checking alerts. It's been jury-rigged to allow non-standard signals. This work is unconventional, but I can use this to boost the signal in the escape ship's distress beacon. Now we only need three more communication parts from this area. What? How many floors does this place have? Keep going up. Oh, this is a demonstration of building. I'm just curious stuff from here, I imagine. Special floor wrappers we use for food and snacks. Of course, you already know that. You know, it took over 10 Earth years of R&D to develop food that could travel such distances and still be palatable. Because of the efficiency with which Hudson Cartier transported colony deployments, a lot of food could be included. Previous colonial missions were less successful because of insufficient cargo and food stores. Of course, until the agrodoms were built, you all had to subsist on just these various fertile stores. Yeah, not being able to effectively grow your own food for such long term missions, that's scary. There's a horde of old earth technology on that dusty shelf. Amazingly, several of the pieces are still functioning. Someone must have collected these old computers, sound systems. and radios. Your scan will help me to fabricate something inventive for the ship, I'm sure. Now we only need two more communication parts from this area. Security panel, here we go. It must be able to lock the other doors in this part of the relay. Are you going to turn off the security locks? Absolutely. Go down. Storage room. Another portable safety lamp. That one still has power, but just barely. It must be slightly newer. The lamp looks like part of a little setup, including a bedroll. Someone must have been sleeping there. Please keep me informed of any other interesting details you find. Standard issue bedroll. They're made of highly dense microfibers, so they're very lightweight and yet warm. It looks like someone has been using it as a habitat of sorts. Very curious.
hefty stack of books there. These ones are mostly adventure stories. You humans do seem to love these kinds of fantastic tales. Wink, wink. <laughs> the owner really did prefer physical reading, I see. They surely had access to digital versions of all of this. In fact, there was an entire database. As with the other books, these bear the W monogram. stack of pocket-sized physical books, I see. Looks like they're mostly guides to social interaction and workplace issues. I suppose whoever owned these books was, as you say, boning up. Is that what you say? Uh, boning up? What? I don't think so. Oh, I see. Then they were... Then they were practicing, or at least studying, in regards to social interaction. Curious. Looks like that portable terminal still has a tiny bit of battery life left. That model was known for being quite long-lasting. I can use your scan of its components as a guide for making the escape ship communications equipment more efficient. Now we only need one more communication part from this area. So wait, have I actually gotten any communication parts? Or have I just learned ways to make, like, parts way more efficient and powerful? I still need an actual communication part, right? Appears to be a heat-absorbing synthetic blanket. Looks like it was hung up on that conduit. What do you think it was used for? Hmm. A towel? Yeah, probably, probably a towel. I suppose that would make sense. Those standard-issue blankets are quick-drying, after all. Oh wait, this was always unlocked, wasn't it? Was it? Yeah. Alright, server room. Hopefully that has an actual part. for the set of pages. The dark. So who do you listen to most? The gardener woman? The drone leader? The self-appointed director? The... Paula, interrupting. William. Sometimes he still broadcasts in the old colony. He sends me little messages, actually. The dark. And why him? Why William? Paula. He was so important here. He kept things working. He kept things repaired. He was essential. And nobody, well, nobody really gave him the respect he deserved. The Dark. So what? Do you think you can relate to him? Paula, I don't know. Of all of them, I think I just understood him the best. When he stopped communicating, it felt like the end of the world. The Dark. Well, when you think of it, it might be. You said it yourself. Paula gives the Dark a cold, long stare. The toughest she can muster. The Dark. There's no point in arguing the inevitable. Paula doesn't say anything. Seems to be the end of the story for now. I wonder if William is in reference to Mr. William King, who was the maintenance chief in Colony B. Yeah, this doesn't really seem too much like fiction. This seems like what actually sort of happened, pretty much. At some point when the colony was going to hell and they were separated and I guess they didn't know that she built a new radio and was listening? I mean, she must have been the one that repaired all the radio stuff in here, right? Uh, I totally forgot her name, but she's the one I need to learn more things from.
Yeah, the monogram W. Must be William King. You've scanned a still functioning terminal that's apparently hooked up to the tower's mainframe. I bet you that room is warm. The mainframe is unfortunately damaged, but the terminal you scanned can still help us. Good work. Well, you found all the components I need for now. When you're finished there, you can use the shuttle to return home. I don't feel like I really found any components at all. I thought I needed to bring something physically back. Seems like I just needed information. Of course I won't complain. Comms relay appears to be in worse shape than I expected, but good work. It looks like you found what we needed for today. Go ahead and use the shuttle to come back home. Oh yeah, I can actually control this little shuttle during this sort of cutscene. Excellent. You've arrived. Please see me in the core immediately so we can process your findings. Okay, well I'd say that's a pretty good place to end this episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I'm going to go process my findings and then perhaps start speaking with the holograms and see if I can learn their expertise. <laughs>